Hey folks, it's Kitsu, and I have a package to open. Now, normally you would call this an unboxing, but this is actually an unenveloping. I'm still sick as a dog. We've got the horrible, horrible cough that's going around right now, and unfortunately for me, it's held on for, first it was a week, and that kind of moved into my chest, became you know, bacterial infection. So I had to take you know, antibiotics, and now I'm finally actually to the point where I can breathe and not cough, and my ears aren't popping constantly from weird pressure balances and stuff like that, so thumbs up. Uh, that said, I've been playing a lot of Witcher 3 and Minecraft, which are both on Xbox One, and until I get my new computer, I have no way of recording that, so it just is what it is. And you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer, because I really just don't feel like doing new games right now, because the way this cold is, it's really hard to focus on anything that you don't already know. So, yeah, I do apologize for the lack of updates. It's been a couple months, but, yeah. Oh, life gets in the way sometimes. Lots of stupid little projects and stuff like that. But anyway... Unboxing! Oh, well, unenveloping, I should say. But, uh, yeah. This came from my artist friend, Michael Remillard. He actually does these really cool sculptures and stuff, and I did him a favor, you know, I caught this guy that was being a jerk, you know, caught all his little statements and stuff, and put them on Tumblr, but, uh, yeah, I didn't expect anything from it. I was just doing it because I thought the guy was being a jerk, and you know, just a good way to advertise his site and get some more people going to his Etsy. And he actually decided to send me something. It's, I think I'm a little, I thought originally he'd send me like a sketch or something. You know, I was like, hey, that's cool. <laughs> but, I mean, the fact that it's something big is really impressive. Uh, cool. Okay, we've got a, a ball of foam. So, let me put that down here for a sec. <laughs> a very important parable. I didn't know what to expect. Maybe they'd be happy to see me, maybe they'd be sad. Like when it hurts so much just to look at someone. Epilogue. You feeling okay? That's really cool. Okay. I'm back. The truth about entropy. Michael, this is the piece that guy was gonna buy. The asshole that was trolling him so hard. Until he found out I disagree with him about the integrity of a total stranger. Seems fitting. Be well, sir. So, <laughs> that's really cool. Let me see if I can... Let's put the tape on. Damn. Okay. Rip. Oh, now that is awesome. <laughs> That is freaking an amazing little sculpture. All his stuff is really cool. I mean, just the fact that this was that asshole's. <laughs> and now his words are immortalized on Tumblr. That's even funnier. Yeah, nobody's really reposting it, but that's okay. Just the fact that he thought he could delete the comment and wipe out all his embarrassing ridiculousness. 
you know, people are like that. I mean, people decide that they're gonna go nuts and be stupid about things that they really don't need to be stupid about. I mean, this is just a really cool art piece. And we're back. Oh, I'm very sorry. I had audio problems. I still have audio problems. I'm going to have to fix them in post. But uh, the first video I actually kept recording for another quarter of the video with no sound at all for some reason. It keeps defaulting to Plantronics rig, which my rig doesn't have a microphone plugged in right now because I had to order a replacement and I just didn't want to take the chance of it dying when I'm not using it for an actual game. So it's still in the bag. If you have a rig, the newer ones are really much better than what I have. I got mine on clearance, so the fact that I got it on clearance, it's not exactly quite good. It's just everybody's having the same problems with those microphones from them. Otherwise, I love the rig. The rig is just perfect for what I needed it for at the time, which was running my Xbox headphones through everything, but uh, now I probably should just upgrade to a better one. But anyway, back to, I looked him up, he's a hellish hellmurple, and each one of these is unique. If you look on the bottom, it looks hollow in the video, but that's actually white resin, and then he poured clear resin, so I guess he ran out of resin, which is cool, but uh, it lets you see the paint on the outside that he did, which is really an interesting thing. It's solid resin the whole way through, but I mean, that is just really freaking cool. But anyway, I'm going to put a link to his Etsy. It goes under Clown 9 Productions, I believe. I could be wrong. It's I looked it up earlier, but my brain is completely jello right now, and I've already done this three times trying to get the audio to work right. So, the hellish hell Murple will sit atop his throne. Yeah, that's how you display an art toy. But uh, anyway, I want to say something about art toys just really quick. Back in the day, when I was in Florida, I went to Tate's Comics all the time, and I saw the Suck Lord's original figures on sale for $25 a pop. And I scratched my head. I said, why would anyone buy this instead of just making their own? Because I had just gotten done with the money show. I'd made my Giver money, the Givey. And, yeah, I was just on this high of, yes, I can make anything. I don't need to sit there and buy other things from other people. Ha <laughs> ha. But I mean, when you think about it, that I could have gotten an original Suck Lord back in the day for 25 bucks, first, maybe second run. You know, really early, before anyone knew about this guy. And I passed on it like an idiot. And it was just 25 bucks. I instead bought a blank money for 25 bucks. And I said to myself, oh, I'm going to make something with this right away. It's still sitting in my closet. You know, I've done a lot of other sculptures and stuff, but after you do one or two of those monies, I mean, unless you're really into that shape, you're not going to keep making things like that. You're just going to move on to something different. And when you see something like this, this is unique. It's not going to be around forever. You're not going to be able to go out and buy one in five years or even find one in five years probably because there's only a handful of them. And that's what art toys are about. They're about having something ephemeral, something unique, something that you're not going to find mass produced in the hundreds of thousands or even in thousands, maybe not even in the hundreds. Some of these people make five or six. Some of these people make, you know, maybe 30 or 40 if they're really ambitious and they just want to crank out the same thing. But I mean, each one of these is unique just from the fact the process and the way he makes them. I mean, it's just always going to come out just a little different. He's got a bunch of them that are red. I've never seen a blue and red one before, so that is just really cool. But uh, go out, support your local artists. 
go ahead and buy art toys because they are much more collectible and they're much more cool to have something that you know is supporting an artist and is making their day a little bit better, a little bit easier. So, I mean, spend your money in the right place. Don't go and buy a goddamn Ghostbusters figure that some jackass didn't even bother to sculpt the damn girls looking like they actually look in the movie. They just kind of like, if you ever watch the specials, the, uh, the toy commercial from the specials where they put, you know, just a, a random head on a body and say, yeah, this is this guy. Yeah. That's what commercial toys are. They are a product and they're not even a well-designed product and they're not a well-made product in a lot of cases. Thank <laughs> you.